Hello everybody and welcome to Toya at Home. It has been a phenomenal week. In a couple of hours, uh, 2 p.m., I am the narrator for Peter and the Wolf at Salisbury Cathedral with John Challenger on the amazing cathedral organ playing the whole of Peter Wolf, all the characters, the bird, the duck, Peter, the wolf, the grandfather, the hunters. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to perform this and to be back in Salisbury Cathedral. I used to live in Salisbury. I lived there for 12 years, late 80s throughout the 90s and it's just going to be so nice to be performing in that cathedral again. I've done many, many performances there. And coming up next week, we have Blackpool. I I just have to look where we're playing in Blackpool, the Leighton Institute, that's this coming Thursday, then Huntington Hall on the Friday, uh, one of my favouritest, favouritest um, venues, and then we have the subscription rooms in Stroud on the Saturday, and that's the end of my kind of touring for this year, 2022, but I promise you 2023 is going to be absolutely incredible. Today I am reacting to a song I actually know virtually nothing about. It's in the fairground. It is also included on Four More From Toya, which is this beautiful vinyl being released on the 9th of December by Cherry Red. I have to show you the colour of the vinyl. I mean, look at that. It's just in celebration of everything punky. So this track is also on this re-release of Four More From Toya. This was originally recorded in October 1981 and released I believe, um, in November that year. And this was released as a single, as a, I think, a double A side alongside Good Morning Universe, made it to number 14 in the charts. I remember doing Top of the Pops that December, which was very exciting for me. And then, of course, I went on and did the huge Drury Lane Old Grey Whistle Test gig. So let me tell you about this week. So we finished off the Billy Idol tour and I just, we've all made so many new friends. By the second gig, we were all on the tour buses. We were all on the crew buses. We knew everyone. And there were very beautiful moments. Um, Killing Joke and, and my band and myself often shared a dressing room, which was always very, very interesting because they are so deep rooted in music presently and music past as well. And they were always playing incredibly interesting music. Obviously, youth, massive worldwide producer. So there were interesting things going on. But one of my favourite moments was Robert and I were watching Killing Joke from the side of the stage when the prodigy came up to us and they grabbed my hand and they said, we love your version of Firestarter. Just really lovely things like that going on. But meeting Billy Idol himself, we were all absolutely awed and flawed because he came into my dressing room to say hello. And I, I don't know how to treat or deal with famous people other than with huge respect and I'm not a great conversationalist when I'm starstruck <laughs> so I, I must have been like uh, but we you know we struck up a conversation but the band said he was actually really shy of me as well uh, and it's interesting that I had the time of my life, the band had the time of their lives on the Billy Idol tour. I mean, every moment was a monumental moment. The band hadn't quite experienced arenas. Um, they, they'd certainly done big shows because they worked with orchestras, but they hadn't quite experienced um, Wembley Arena, uh, Birmingham Resort World, and, and all of those size of venues, and they were loving every minute. For me... I would do anything, anything to permanently be in arenas and building arena shows. It's all I've ever wanted. And I have to be realistic. It'll only ever happen if I'm invited onto those shows by people like Billy Idol. So here I am in front of Billy Idol 
having met him about 45 years earlier uh, when he was in Generation X and neither of us not quite knowing what to say but having so much to say and my concern was you know he'd been on the road for three months the band themselves saying that they were tired and they needed to get home. And I think they've only got this week in Vegas and then they do get home. And you just appreciate how hard people work. But I said to Billy Idol, are you going to get home? And he just looked at me and I said, well, Vegas will be fun. You know, simple as that. And then we did photos. Uh, he had obviously researched what I've been doing presently, which I appreciate. Steve Stevens, I mean, my goodness, Steve Stevens knew everything about me and Robert, everything, down to Willie Fred the Rabbit and what our home looked like. He obviously watches us every week. So I'm just going to kind of end this year with a smile on my face because it's been so fantastic. So anyway, let's talk about what I'm going to react to. This is going to be really interesting for me because I have never seen this performance at the Beat Club. I can tell just by seeing the opening picture that I was, as a performer, in a very good place at this time. So the Beat Club is um, a live performance. It's a concert performance. Before I start rolling, um, Phil Spaulding on bass, Joel Bogan on guitar, the wonderful, great Simon Phillips on drums and Adrian Lee on keyboards. So let's have a look at this. Oh, you know, there's something behind this seat I've got to grab. I hope I can do this graciously. Excuse me bending over. Now this, I did not realise. I had no realisation. This is purely coincidental. This is a drawing by Dexter Brown. And Dexter followed me for a couple of years, drawing from the side of the stage. And this is actually from the shoot of Thunder in the Mountains. And Dexter made me, these are armour pieces and the spike necklace. I have just seen, it's what I am wearing at the Beat Club. Oh, it's just so wonderful. Let's get it started. So live concert footage. I'm obviously very at home on the stage. This is in Germany. And I, I just look so grounded. My boots are beautiful. I'm in very shiny thigh boots. I know they're six inch heels and I'm talking to the audience. So you've got all the moody keyboards. You have Adrian Lee wearing one of the first head mics. They were never quite successful. They popped a lot and they could break down very quickly and erratically during live shows. But Adrian was very much a technology person and always had the latest technology. So it's so, so much fun to see him in that head mic. The idea behind this song, I'm a huge fan of Stephen King, the horror writer. Um, he's called a horror writer. I actually think he goes way beyond horror deep into the psyche of human nature, human culture, the human race. He explores everything. And I think he has an incredibly deep developed spirituality as well. So the thing about in the fairground, within a quarter of a mile from where I'm sitting is floodplain. And when I was a child, because I spent every weekend in this town, there would sometimes be fairs on the fields in the floodplain, you know, kind of, you had the Ferris wheel, you had the coconut stalls, you had the, the picking up the duck stalls, the loop stalls. And on one occasion, when I was about 12, a band called Chicken Shack were playing. They built a stage and Chicken Shack came here and played. And it brought a lot of hippies into the town. It must have been the end of the 60s, the, the very beginning of the 70s. And I was able to walk in and watch this show. There was no age limitation. And right next to the stage was a fairground. And I was never too art able to articulate what this meant to me because there were bikers there, there were people there we never normally saw in this town. And the whole thing affected me in a very creative way. I really loved it. I loved the band playing outside. I loved 
the, the kind of the groups, the gangs that it was bringing in to town uh, that were just so different to what I was used to. And I was brought up on boats and on a caravan on the River Avon. And suddenly you have people with a very highly developed taste in music coming into town and watching this show. And I just stayed there quite a long time. I, I went away into the town, got some food, went back, stayed up all night, watched the fair break down. And this is is very much about transient lifestyle. In the fairground is about the transients. That a fairground could come into a town and that town is starting to decay and it takes people back away with it. People follow the fairground to escape the decay. And this is what this song is about, that performance. And even though I didn't really know Stephen King as a writer back then, I, I just feel that many things were reaching back to me from the future, reaching to grab me and pull me into the future, which is an idea and a concept that Fripp and I are very, very kind of tight about in that we believe the future reaches back to us and pulls us forward so that we can do our work. And in the fairground is a little bit like that. Very moody, very unusual for a double single. Uh, I, um, Good Morning Universe was the main single. But what I love about this is that it, it's just about being led and being led away from something that could entrap you and destroy your life and helping you kind of break away from the confines of very structured societies. The painting, um, this happened only on that tour that it was like a, a marking of the tribe and a marking uh, and a, a claiming of other people. So it's a very, very dark song, not quite gothic, but very, very kind of, I'm just watching Phil Spaulding, he's just always so fantastic just very tribal and the fairground being things that come into your town change your life make you see things anew make you see that where you live where you were brought up uh, are structures that we we can free ourselves from so that's what that is about and it's on the re-release four more from toya cherry red and i just think this packaging is so good i just absolutely love it there you go and I really like my attitude on this performance. It's very, very confident. I have found my feet. Uh, whereas a year earlier, exactly a year earlier um, from this performance, uh, no, uh, November 1981, I the band had broken up. Uh, Charlie Francis, Steve Bray had left the band. I was performing in a play at the Royal Court called Sugar and Spice. And I just did not know where my future was going to go. So everybody, thank you so much for watching Toya at Home today. Tonight it's going to be an Objects of Toya, which usually becomes an Objects of Robert because Robert is in New York State uh, doing Daryl's House with Daryl Hall, his TV programme. I get Robert home midweek this coming week and I can't wait. And then we start our Christmas. Tomorrow we have, I think it's a very special Sunday lunch because it's a cult band very well known. You see lots of young A-listers wearing their t-shirts today and it's about time we covered this band. So you've got a very special, very wacky Sunday lunch tomorrow and everything is back to normal next week. Thank you so much and lots of love from me. Mwah. This one is part of our new single in England. It's called In the Fairground. It's about idiots.